counting as insert mature persons having 18 years of age who can watch the interests of the candidate. No specific qualifications are prescribed. However, the following persons cannot be appointed as counting agents of a candidate during the election. Any sitting minister of union government, any sitting minister of state government, sitting members of parliament, sitting members of legislative assembly or legislative council, chief, head, chairpersons of local bodies, mayor of a corporation, chairperson of municipality or Nagar Panchayat, chairperson of district level Jilla Parishad or block level Panchayat Samiti, elected chairperson of national, state, district cooperative institutions, political functionary appointed as chairperson of central public sector undertaking, state public sector undertaking and government leader. Or finally, any government servant cannot be appointed as the counting agent and any other person having security cover provided by the state cannot be appointed as counting agent. Appointment are to be made by the candidate himself or his election agent and this appointment shall be done in form 18. The counting agent will also sign the form in token of his acceptance of the appointment. Two copies of such forms along with photographs of the agents will be prepared and signed. One copy of the form is to be forwarded by the candidate election agent to the returning officer, while the second copy is given to the counting agent for production before the returning officer. A candidate may appoint all his counting agents by a single letter of appointment in Form 18. In this case, all the counting agents are required to sign the letter of appointment in token of having accepted the appointment and there is also time limit for appointment. The Election Commission of India has directed that the contesting candidates should submit the list of their counting agents with photograph of such agents to the returning officer latest by the 17 hours 3 days prior to the date fixed for the counting of votes. That is by 5 p.m. of the 7th March 2022 in case of the first phase of the Manipur State Assembly election 2022. The returning officer shall prepare the ID cards for them and shall issue the same to the candidate. And the letter of appointment along with the ID card must be produced before the returning officer at least one hour before the time fixed for the counting of votes. The returning officer will not accept any appointment letter which is received after the above stated time. Number of counting agents required is one for each counting table. There will be seven counting tables this time due to the new COVID broad guidelines, and one counting agent at ROS table and one at the postal bellows counting table. No entry in a counting hall unless a second copy is given to the returning officer after signing the declaration form. And revocation of this counting agent appointment can be done at form 19. But appointment of the place counting agent shall be done before commencement of counting. As per the instruction given by Election Commission of India, dated 13 May 2014, contesting candidates who are the SPG protected are to be accompanied by one SPG personnel in plain clothes with one concealed arms inside the counting hall. Further, the sitting arrangements for the counting agent shall be made with the following sequences. First, the priorities will be given to the agents of candidates of recognized national parties. Next, agents of candidates of recognized state parties and agents of the candidates of recognized state parties of other states permitted to use the reserve symbol and next, agents of candidates of the registered unrecognized party and at last, agents of the independent candidates. Next, I will explain how the discipline and decorum in counting hold should be maintained. Agents has to keep seated at the allotted table. Agents should not be allowed to move about the hall. However, candidates and election agent can move around the hall. Only one person, either candidate or agent, are to be present at the table on behalf of the contesting candidate. If the returning officer doubts any person, he can have him or her search even if they possess valid authorization later. Central Armed Police Force officers should be posted at the doors of the counting hall. 
and no one can enter or leave hold without returning officer's permission. The returning officer can send anyone out of the hold if they disobey the returning officer's order. Next, I will talk about the appointment of the counting agents. Counting staffs are to be appointed by the concerned returning officer. There should be one counting supervisor, one counting assistant, and one micro observer for his counting table. Sufficient number of group D government employees shall be appointed as counting assistant or counting peons to carry the voting machines from a strong room to the counting halls and back to the strong room and for the selling of the EBMs. Returning officer shall not appoint anyone working for a candidate as a counting supervisor and counting assistant. Staffs of local bodies will not be used as counting staffs and appointment for these counting staff shall be done in a prescribed format shown here. Counting supervisors shall be preferably gazetted officers of central or state government or comparable status of state or central government undertakings. And counting assistants shall be selected carefully from officers of the good competence. One more counting assistant for each assembly constituency so will be attached as a distant counting assistant for the election commission of India observer for assisting him in the real counting. For counting of postal bellows, there will be up to four tables at most. In each table, there shall be an ARO, one counting supervisor, two counting agents. The counting supervisor and counting assistants of postal bellows will be preferably gazetted officers. One additional micro observer for each table for postal ballot counting shall be there, and the micro observer will be invariably a central government or central government public sector undertaking employee, and one more micro observer will be at the counting table. Two additional micro observers will be deployed in each counting hall of every assembly constituency. Out of these two micro observer, one will keep watch over the data entry in the computer place in the counting hall for round wise counting and compilation of votes recorded for his candidate. He shall ensure that the entries in part two of the form 17C are correctly entered in this computer by the data entry operator. The second micro observer shall assist the observer and recheck on the print out of the data entry done in step one above and that all data which has been entered is fully correct and complete and in accordance with the original part two of the form 70C receipt from the counting table. In this regard, for other counting activity, the observers will properly train the micro observer. There will be randomization of the counting officials so appointed. The randomization is done in three stages. The district election officer shall issue photo identity cards to all the counting staffs. First randomization will be done by district election officer with 120% of the required number of counting supervisor, counting assistant, and micro observer, including the reserve, using the randomization software one week prior to the date of counting. Presence of observer is not required at this stage. The second randomization shall be done by district election officer in presence of observer. 24 hours prior to the commencement of counting. The returning officer shall issue the appointment letters to these officials, intimating them about the concern allotted ACs. In the third randomization, the allotment of tables will be done for the counting supervisor, counting assistant, micro observer. This randomization will be done by the returning officer in presence of the observer at 5 a.m. on the day of counting. The third randomization can be done either by using a computer or manually. The district election officer shall ensure videography of randomization process and the whole process of randomization shall be over by 6 a.m. of the counting day. In the counting process, videography is very essential. The following process shall be videographed. Randomization of counting stops process of opening of a strong room, transfer of EBMs from strong room to counting hall, counting hall arrangements, counting for the postal ballot and by the electronic voting machine, process of tabulation, process of counter checking of two electronic voting machines by the observer 
entire procedure to count the ballot paper slips of BB pet and sealing. Security arrangements, presence of candidates and their agents, process of declaration of result, handing over of certificate of return of election, sealing of EVMs after counting, any other significant events of the counting process. The videography should indicate the date and time and unedited video CDs should be sealed, clearly labeling all the details contained therein after the counting process is over for future reference. Accordingly, adequate number of video teams may be deployed on the counting day. I will say some important points how the counting hole is managed inside. The candidate and the election agent can go to any table from outside the wear mess, which is specially kept for separating the candidate election agent from the counting table. And smoking is not allowed inside the counting table. There will be no webcasting of the process of counting of votes, but the CCTV coverage will have to be made. The connectivity of the cameras will be done through the wire connection. No camera stain is allowed inside the counting hall. Handheld camera can be allowed to the authorized election commission of India and pass holders. However, no video coverage for actual votes in EVM and ballot papers will be done. The returning officer shall carry the mobile phone linked with the ETBPS for receiving the OTB to log in into the system. It will be switched off once the ETBPS system is logged in and shall be kept with the observer. No one else other than observer can carry mobile phone inside the counting hall. There shall be Management for the media in the counting hall. Media pass has to be issued in advance. Media center shall be a separate room with adequate space. There should be telephone with SAD facility, fax machine, computer printer, scanner, and internet connection. Use of mobile phone is allowed at the media center. Media person's movement from media center to counting hall shall be done as a guided tour in a small group for small duration. Inside the counting hall, use of mobile is not allowed. Recording of actual votes recorded in EBM is also not allowed. Returning officer in advance will mark a line or fix one string to limit the access of media inside the counting hall. Next, I will say something about the security arrangement at the counting center. There should be tight security arrangement at counting center. First of all, a secure and smooth to and fro movement of EVMs from strong room to counting hall should be ensured. A barricading of the part used for transportation of EVMs between the strong rooms of an AC and counting hall for that AC should be done so that transportation is not interrupted by the presence of non officials and media persons. No crisscross of parts of the two ACs shall be done at any cost. A 100 meter perimeter around a counting premise is to be demarcated as a pedestrian zone. It must be duly barricaded with an entry gate to enter into the counting premise and no vehicle should be allowed to cross this. There will be three tier cordoning system, the first and outer cordon to start from the pedestrian zone. It must have adequate local police forces with a senior magistrate to check the identity of entrance. Persons with photo ID cards issued by the Election Commission of India or District Election Officer only to be allowed to cross the zone. In the second zone, it will start from the gate of the counting premise or campus and will be manned by the State Armed Police Force. Here, the checking of identity and frisking shall be done by the state police personnel to ensure that no prohibited items, say matchbox, arms, etc. are carried inside. Women shall be fixed only by the women police personnel or women home guards. At the second cordon, no one shall be loitering around outside the counting hall and no one shall be using mobile and other communication equipment. The third security cordon is at the door of the counting hall where the Central Armed Police Force is to be present. Frisking will be done to ensure that no one enters with mobile and other prohibited items. Entry into the counting hall is very strict. Only the following persons are allowed, counting supervisors, counting assistant, 
micro observers, persons authorized by the Election Commission of India, public servants on duty in connection with election, candidates, their election agent and counting agents. Every body inside the counting hall shall have to display his eye card. Police personnel, whether in uniform or plain clothes, are not allowed. They must remain outside and can enter only when called by the returning officer. Lots of activities will be taken up on the counting day. The following sequence of steps will be taken up by the returning officer. First is the opening of strong room. Next, ET PBS pre-counting steps, postal ballot counting, control unit counting, PB pet counting, handling the special situations, and compilation of result. The returning officer should commence the counting at the hour fixed for the purpose and communicate the time of opening the strong room to the candidates and observer. This time, date and a place will be informed to the candidates election agent in time. Strong rooms will be opened in presence of the returning officer, assistant returning officer, candidates, election agents, ECI observers. After making the necessary entries in the logbook maintained for the purpose, the seal of the log shall be checked and then broken. Entire proceeding shall be videographed with a date and time stamping. Returning officer shall read out aloud provisions of the section 128 of the Representation of People Act 1951 for the maintaining secrecy of votes in the counting hall. Everyone in the hall should be instructed to maintain the secrecy. And as per the requirement of the Rule 54A of the Conduct of Election Rule 1961, counting of postal ballot shall be taken up first. EBM counting can start after a gap of 30 minutes from the commencement of the counting of postal ballots. Counting of postal ballot papers shall be done at returning officer's table. If there is shortage of space for keeping more than three or four tables in the hall and the number of postal ballot paper received is very high, the returning officer can make arrangement of a separate hall adjacent to the counting hall for counting of the postal ballot papers. Only such postal ballot papers is received before the hour fixed for commencement of the counting shall be counted. The penultimate round of counting of the votes recorded in electronic voting machine shall not be commenced till the counting of the postal ballot is completed in all respects. And certain steps are to be taken up before the counting of the postal ballots. First one is ET PBS pre counting steps. The following should be done. First, the outer cover A, that is Form 13C, which is having the QR code on the lower right hand side, will be read by the QR code reader and necessary valid checks will be performed for possible duplicates and verification of the service voter. A unique serial number will be provided by the computer. This serial number will also be manually marked by the returning officer on the envelope being verified. In the step two, if there is no duplicate and correct verification is found in the QR code scanning, then only outer envelope that is cover B will be open. In the step 3, open the outer cover and take out the two documents which are required to be found inside. The first one is declaration that is form 13A and second one is inner cover that is form 13B containing the postal ballot paper. In the step 4, returning officers should take out the declaration from the outer envelope and the inner cover in form 13B. Before opening the cover in Form 13B containing the postal ballot paper, the RO must check the declaration in Form 13A and all such Forms 13A must be kept separately and sealed before taking up Form 13B for opening and counting. The returning officer will reject a postal ballot without opening its inner cover in Form 13B. If the declaration in Form 13A is not found in the cover, or the electronic postal identification number EPBID in the declaration in Form 13A does not match the issue EPBID or the declaration has not been duly signed and not attested by an officer competent to do so 
or the EPB ID of the postal ballot appearing in the declaration is different from the EPB ID on the cover in Form 13B. If such rejected cover should be endorsed suitably and declaration and cover should be placed back in the cover in Form 13C after envelope. All such cover in Form 13C should be kept together in a separate packet, duly sealed and particular such as the name of constituency, that of counting and a brief description of contents should be noted thereon for easy identification in future. All the declaration in Form 13A which have been found to be in order should then be kept separately for counting. Now, the further counting of ETBPS will be done as same as the normal postal ballot counting process. Here are some important points I want to add is, if the QR code reading indicates any discrepancies such as the document not being genuine or multiple copies of document have been received, such envelopes shall be kept in a separate tray mean for rejected envelopes. In case of the rejection of the envelopes or the documents on QR code reading, the assistant returning officer or the returning officer should see and satisfy himself about the discrepancies shown in QR code reading that results in the rejection. We should keep in mind it is states that returning officer should never change the mobile number or email ID till the election process is over and it should be ensured that don't disturb is not activated in returning officer's mobile number and ensure that proper internet connectivity is provided as far as possible. Now let's come to the point how the postal ballots will be counted. All the postal ballots received by the returning officer up to the hour fixed for the commencement of the counting shall be counted. And so all such postal ballots should be brought before the returning officer's table. No cover B which contains the postal ballot received after the commencement of counting shall be opened and counted. Suitable endorsement to that effect on the cover of Form 13C should be made on each cover. Thereafter, this cover in Form 13C will be put into a large cover and sealed before proceeding further. All cover B that is containing the Form 13C containing the postal ballots which were received in time shall be opened one after another. The returning official will reject a postal ballot paper without opening its inner cover A in any of the following cases. First, if the declaration in Form 13A is not found in the cover B in Form 13C. Second, if the declaration has not been duly signed by the elector or has not been duly attested by an officer competent to do so, or is otherwise substantially defective. Third point, if the serial number of the ballot paper appearing on the declaration in Form 13A is different from the serial number as endorsed on the inner cover A in Form 13B. However, a postal ballot paper shall not be rejected merely on the ground that the attesting officer has not put his seal on the declaration of the elector in Form 13A. If the attesting officer has given all the relevant details with regard to his name and designation on that form. Further, a postal ballot paper shall also not be rejected on the ground that the sender has not put his signature on outer cover B. If the identity of the sender is verifiable on the basis of his declaration in Form 13A. All such rejected covers in Form 13B containing the postal ballot should be suitably endorsed by the RO or ARO and put it back with the respective declaration in cover B in Form 13C. It should be sealed by the returning officer and ARO and keep separately and name of the assembly constituency, date of counting and brief description of content shall be noted thereon. The returning officer or the assistant returning officer shall proceed to deal with the remaining covers in Form 13B now. In order to keep the secrecy of the postal votes, all the declaration in Form 13A which are found in order shall be placed in separate packet and sealed. It is necessary to put this declaration away in a sealed packet before any postal ballots are brought out of their covers A in Form 13B to ensure the secrecy of votes. Thereafter, the returning officer shall take out the postal ballot papers one after another that is containing in the Form 13B. The returning officer and assistant returning officer shall scrutinize every such ballot paper and decide its validity. 
A posted ballot will be rejected on the following grounds. If no vote is recorded thereon, if votes are given on it in favor of more than one candidate, or if it is a spurious ballot paper, or if it has been so damaged or mutilated that its identity as genuine ballot paper cannot be established, or if it is not written in the cover B, sent along with it to the elector by the returning officer, if the mark indicating vote is made in such a way that it is doubtful to make out the candidate to whom the vote has been given, if it bears any mark or writing by which the voter can be identified. Here I want to add the following points that the arrow or returning officer shall maintain the separate file for each counting tables are wise and if more than one counting table is used so that there is no mixing of the valid postal ballot for the different tables. Count the ballot votes and credit each candidate with votes given to him. Record for each table's candidate wise by using the pre-printed names of candidate in the prescribed format and calculate the total number of votes received by the each candidate and this should be carefully entered in the result sheet in form 20 at the appropriate column. And after the postal ballot counting is over, announce the result allowed in front of the candidates.